Now we are going to talk more about all the privacy and antitrust complaints that the country's biggest tech companies are facing right now. And for that, uh, we welcome Bob Davis. He is managing uh, partner at Highland Capital and the former CEO of Lycos. Our guest host, Ken Langone, is here as well. As well. But, Bob, the, the question I'd ask you is whether antitrust policy, as, as it exists today, um, makes sense in terms of how to address some of these, uh, the, the size and scale of some of these big companies. Because one of the things we've clearly seen is that uh, the price for consumers uh, has actually come down or at least stayed steady. It, it, it's very hard to make the argument that prices have gone up. Um, but uh, at the same time, uh, what we keep hearing is from competitors uh, that this effectively is a tax on everybody. Boy, they, they, uh, first of all, good morning, everyone. But uh, boy, this is a uh, double-edged sword, and there's no easy answer in this one. It's it's hard to say that the big tech companies don't have monop monopolistic power today. But if you jump back to what the monopolies were in the days of old, we think where they were, the, the Standard Oils of the world, they they bought up all the oil supply, and the consumer was gouged. And what we're seeing with most of the companies today, digital tech, for the most part, with the consumer, that's free. Mm -hmm. I mean, Google, I pay nothing for it. Facebook, I pay right. nothing. Right. It's free. Amazon brings a product to me for less money than anything I've seen before. So the, it's hard to look at where the consumer is hard. There are a lot, harmed rather, but there's a lot of roadblocks out there that we have to be really careful of, and I think this is where the regulators are right. So there's a real balance that we look at. So I take a look at you know, many of these areas, and you start to say, well, what happens when Amazon promotes its own Amazon Basics product at the expense of all the other brands out there, which they do over and over and over again. But, Bob, what you could go Google? to, uh, <coughs> you know, people have been white labeling products in the retail world for as long as I can remember. They, they, sure, they sure have, but in the retail world, you at least have the benefit of walking down that aisle and seeing the product. In the Amazon world, when you search for something, Amazon Basics, it's first, second, third, that's what you see. So it's promoted to you in a really overpowering way. But listen, I'm not advocating to break up Amazon, to be clear. I'm just saying that there's a balance. Right. that we have to find here that what would you do, Ken? work. So, I don't know what I would do, but I think you think of how the productivity gains we've received in this country, which aren't included in GDP, by the way. I think about, I was a kid when I was in uh, graduate school, how I come out to, into New York City to the library, mm -hmm. an hour in, an hour out. I sit in my, with my iPad in my living room. Look up Google. Right. I got everything there. I, I couldn't, my life wouldn't function if I didn't have you Amazon know, direct we delivery and We ought to be celebrating these companies. I, yeah. Let's have some boundaries, but we ought to be celebrating. Look at right. what China's doing. China is encouraging this kind of thing because it is a, it's a country asset. It's a major asset. We have got tech geniuses in this country that we should be celebrating because it makes life right. better for all of us. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bob. Um, it sure does. But we, need, but, we need a, but we need a balance, though, as well. Yeah, and you, I have no trouble. But, but let's not yeah. throw the baby out with the bathwater. I'm with you on that, Ken. I'm with you on that, Ken. And as a, as a venture capitalist, my whole world is about startups and getting young companies off the ground, mm -hmm. of course. These guys surely have market power in a way that's been unprecedented. But, and Bob, that, there's nothing. The market power unto itself Facebook is not. With, Facebook with 2.7 billion users, is, that's a lot of users out there. And when they gobble up something like uh, Instagram uh, right. for a billion dollars, I mean, it's a rounding error for them, but. Consolidate the market. But, Bob, here's, here's the issue, uh, in, at least as I see it. A, there's nothing illegal about uh, actually being a monopoly unto itself. I feel like there's a misunderstanding in America right. about that. Uh, the issue is whether you created that monopoly illegally or you're sustaining that monopoly illegally uh, is fundamentally the, the question. But let's assume uh, that it is a monopoly, then what? Um, you know, I'm thinking you, you're a venture capitalist. Uh, you, you've invested in all sorts of consumer-related uh, companies. To acquire a new customer today, almost by default, requires you to go through Facebook and or Google. There's just no two ways yeah. about it. But at least there's two right. players, no? And maybe a third with Amazon? Yeah, may, maybe a third with Amazon. And, of course, that's one of the things about these companies that makes them so strong. As a software company and as a tech company, there's just no marginal cost for an incremental user for them. As a consumer company, I have substantial marginal cost to acquire a, a, new, a new user, and that's all going to Amazon and, uh, I'm sorry, right. going to Google and Facebook. But, again, I, I'm not advocating that you break these apart. I, I think we find, need to find a right level of balance, and there's extremists on both sides of this, this issue. The folks that are hollering and banging to say break them apart, that doesn't solve anything. These companies solve I real pain problems for, for all of us. But we need, we need a little balance. You know, the, the other thing is, we haven't talked about this, but Facebook is introducing its, its new digital currency, Libra. 
And that introduces a whole new bag of worms. Should that hit, and should that be successful? Right. Because now we have Facebook competing with fiat currencies. So what happens? Is the U.S. dollar something that's irrelevant at some point in time because Facebook has three billion global users that are using its dollar or its currency, Libra? Right. We'll see where that goes, but those are the types of things that I think we need to think about and put in place. Hey, Bob, but, to, you know, can I just pivot the conversation for one second? Because the other yeah, issue I wanted yeah. to talk about this morning and also wanted to get Ken's views on was what is taking place in the IPO market, a market you know very well. And it feels like maybe the bell has rung, uh, or at least temporarily, uh, this WeWork, uh, this WeWork delayed, delayed if not canceled, we'll see. Uh, IPO seems to be it. But you look at Uber, you look at Lyft, you look at the, the, the Smile Club Direct, you look at some of these things. Um, what do you think has happened here? Well, a, a couple of things. First of all, I, I wouldn't lay out because of a handful of IPOs that says the market is damaged. And I wouldn't underestimate the, the great value and the economic uplift that these companies have given to the marketplace. I mean, I have a friend, <laughs> I have a friend, we call him Eddie Vacation. This guy hasn't worked you know, two straight days in his life, rides around in the company car and dyes his hair orange. I mean, that's the story of his life. He's not contributing. These guys, these companies are contributing real value, building real businesses into the U.S. economy, and that's what's powerful. That said, that said, we have a handful that you have to wonder where they're going. When a company in its prospectus says, I don't know if we'll ever make money, that's tricky. When we work, right. when we work growth, parallel, it's losses, parallel its revenue, dollar for dollar. In fact, it's, it's losses outpace its revenue, yep. that's a different situation. That's yep. a world that I'm not accustomed to. What do you think, Ken? Well, let me tell you what. These, rate, these values that are being put out on some of these companies right. is an argument I would use that we don't need lower interest rates. There's a lot of money out there. There's a lot of money out there. And, and frankly, I think we don't need major surgery. We need some modifications, some, some tune-ups. I'd be very concerned about may messing with this whole area. Let the, let the market decide if it wants to get burned. Do WeWorks you? probably right. got the message, hey, guys, you ain't getting this. Right. Don't forget, they sold SoftBank a big, what, $2 billion worth in January? More, yeah. For what valuation? 40-something? 47, 47 billion. Okay. Okay. But, uh, uh, no, <laughs> blended, blended down into the high 20s, just to be fair. But yes. I'll tell you yeah, what. But I, and I think part of the problem is you look at these companies and, and everyone wants the tech label because a tech company trades at a high multiple. Yeah. And it's tough to think of some of these companies as true tech. I mean, yeah. one of the benefits of tech is, of course, we talked about this earlier, but zero marginal cost. Well, we work mm -hmm. has substantial marginal cost. I mean, yes. every new location yeah. is, a new, right. is a new set of leases right. that they find for themselves. It, it doesn't exist. And they put this tech label on. You know, we work as a, as a property company, an mm -hmm. operating management company. And the best case, you compare it, in my opinion, to the great hotel groups. And, and that's and, the type of business that it is. You know, supply and demand still works. Yeah. Where do we get a downturn? Right. Some of the vacancies, not that they're going to just move out, they're going to go broke, these little guys that are in there. Right, and they have long term leases. We work does. Yeah, but WeWork has long term leases right. with short term leases that they're leasing people. They're doing people. the exact yeah. opposite. They're borrowing short term, right. lending long term. Right.